CataractCoach.com. Traumatic cataract with severe corktopia. Now, what's your approach to help this young patient? Look at that damage. Small little pupil. Looks like there was a ruptured globe. And at the side of the rupture, looks like the iris is entrapped within the cornea material here. There's a traumatic cataract as well. Surgeon's going to make a couple of pairs and TC incisions. And you're definitely going to need to free up that iris from those adhesions at the edge of the cornea limbus junction there. So here we go. Good expansion of the pupil. The cataract surgery is going to be the easy part here. The tough part is going to be addressing the iris issue. So now main incision being made. And then here we go, using a Sinsky hook or some other similar device to free up any iris that's attached there. Now you got to be careful because sometimes that iris is plugging up the damage that you have. So you can cut some of the bands there, but you don't want to yank it too hard because, again, you could have iris plugging up a hole at the corneal limbal junction. And it's now fibrosed in there 10 years later, and it's pretty solid. And you don't want to disrupt that. So I did like that idea of using the micro scissors to cut adhesions instead of trying to rip them. That's smart. Now here comes the rexus. Again, the nucleus removal is going to be easy. It's just this quadrantic cortical wedge shape that you can remove. So now doing some hydrodissection. Again, the nucleus itself is pretty soft. That should aspirate out very easily. No chopping or divide and conquer needed here. Just aspirate and pull it out. Now here comes a bimanual cortex removal. I agree, I would do that one area last. I'd take out most of the cortex and then try to address that one area that's where the trauma is. And that looks pretty clean here. So get that last bit, there you go. There's the last bit and being very cautious here because there could be at that same site, there could be damage to the capsule, damage to the zone of support. You could have vitreous prolapsing, but it looks pretty good. Now here comes the lens, single piece acrylic lens going in the eye here. Make sure that goes completely in the caps or bag. There it goes. Get that position, dial it around. I like the idea of moving the haptics 90 degrees away from the area of that trauma. That does make a lot of sense to me. And I think that's going to provide a good outcome. Here we go at the end of the case. Now what are you going to do to address the corectopia, the irregular iris? It looks pretty good here on the OR table, but what happens is when the pupil comes down and the midriatic agents are gone, it's still going to be a little bit decentered. In fact, significantly so. So here again, pulling out that iris tissue as you can. Be careful not to disinsert it from the iris root. Remember earlier, the surgeon was very smart and cut away the adhesion from the iris to the cornea. So this is where we're going to do a pupiloplasty. So a pupiloplasty is not a difficult procedure, something certainly you can do. Notice how the eye is full of viscoelastic. So putting in the viscoelastic agent is going to make the... Uh, access for doing the pupiloplasty a lot easier. And again, going in there with a blood instrument, trying to separate out just to make sure no more adhesions are there. You could also put up a gonio mirror or gonio prism in order to get a better view. Now here, going in with the suture material, what's the suture material going to be? 10 proline is the commonly used one, sometimes maybe 9 proline, but you want it on this longer needle so you can get across here. Now, you start off by going through a paracentesis here, um, and then coming through, and then you can just poke through the cornea or come out another paracentesis, however you'd like. And so there's that suture being pulled through, and then you can use the Agarwal 4 throw pupil pass technique, and that's a very straightforward way of just tying this up. So now grabbing the one end, bringing it out, and the 4 throw technique is again throwing four passes and then tightening it. So bring that loop outside the eye so you can access it. And again, we have great videos on just this technique on cataract coach. Just go to the uh, search box and type in pupiloplasty and you'll see all these techniques explained very clearly. So there's the externalized loop. There's the loop right there. And I expand that a little bit and now get the suture end here and pass it through four times. One, two, three, four. And then you can cinch that down and you'll create a nice um, adhesion of those two edges of the pupil. So one, two, three, four. There you go. See, one, two, three, and four. Now, you could just do two, one, one. That's the typical one. You can do that too. But here's three, and then here's four. And that'll suture down very nice and be very secure. And as you pull these two ends, you can see, look, as you pull one end and the other end, there you go. It cinches down your iris together. And now you've got a much better centration of the pupil here. Now, in a case like this, you may actually need to make an incision on the opposite side of the iris and allow that 
to uh, open up a little bit more as well. Now, this pupil plus is going to be helpful in giving the patient a better cosmetic effect, but also in giving the patient better vision because the patient is now going to be able to look through the center of that optic. And you can put additional sutures if you desire to close those little defects even more. And at the end of the case, that's really a very nice outcome. So nicely centered, the patient's going to be a lot happier, and the patient had a marked improved vision from counting fingers pre-op to about 20-40 vision post-op. So a very nice outcome. Great video, great case, and thank you for sharing.